has done marvelous, he has done marvelous things. Praise the Lord, he has done marvelous, marvelous, he has marvelous, done marvelous things. Praise the Lord. Oh. God, amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you, but my love and his love is just a bubbling over in my heart. Anybody happy amen. this morning? Y'all, let's sing. Hallelujah, Lord, we're singing hallelujah. Singing hallelujah. Somebody sing 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 hallelujah. Yo, we finna take it, yeah. And don't you know I've been running every since I made a start. Don't you know my days are King Jesus gonna make my burden lighter Oh, love is a bubble ain't over in my heart I keep singing hallelujah Oh, glory hallelujah I've been running since I made a start Don't you know my days are King Jesus 
is going to make my world unlike oh, 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 love is a bubble ain't over Let's do it one more time yeah. I keep singing hallelujah Oh glory hallelujah Don't you know I've been running every since I made a start Don't you know my days are dry Jesus is gonna make my life. Don't you know I've been running the in my heart? Oh, keep singing hallelujah. Stay right there, praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're singing hallelujah. We're singing hallelujah. But this morning, on the hallelujah. How many know that hallelujah is the highest praise this morning? Yeah, I'm going with hallelujah. Let's take it. I don't you know I've been running every since I made a start. Don't you know my day is my right. Here Jesus is going to make my burden light. love is a Stay right there. Love is a bubble in Love is a bubble in One more time. Love. One more time. I said love. One more time. Turn the height. Love. We've been the ending. Love, love is a bubble over in my heart. Oh, in my heart. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to the Sheldon Heights Church of Christ family. It's a blessing to be in your presence on this morning. We thank God for blessing us yet again with another opportunity to join him on today. If you are visiting with us, if this is your first time viewing our channel, we're just so thankful that you're with us. We pray that God will open your eyes and your ears and that you'll have a great experience. We're just so thankful you're with us. We pray that you will continue to join with us, and we pray that God will continue to bless you. On this morning, as we open up our service, we just like to read two verses from Psalms chapter 8, the beginning verse and the end verse in that chapter, just to prepare us and give us the right mindset as we go into service. Psalms chapter 8, verse number 1 says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. In the ninth verse, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. It's just a wonderful opportunity for us to worship. We just thank God again, and we pray that all of us will bow our heads and pray together as we enter in our service. Father in heaven, we're just so thankful for this opportunity. We're just so thankful for this opportunity to be able to worship with you on today. We recognize that it is not only an awesome opportunity, but it is a wonderful blessing that you're giving us. Regardless of the venue, regardless of how you're blessing us to gather together, we just thank you on today. We thank you for every member of our congregation. We thank you for every visitor that we have on today, Father. We thank you for all the blessings that you've bestowed upon us as we look back over our journeys within our lives. We just pray, Father, that we'll humble ourselves and that everything that we do today will be uh, in accordance to your will and your way. Amen. We pray for every man that comes before you on today. For your preached word, we pray that it will continue just to prick the hearts of men who do not know you, that they'll come to you before it is everlasting too late. Again, Father, we just pray because your name is excellent. Mm -hmm. So we thank you and we love you and we pray, Father, that you'll be with us throughout this service. This prayer we ask in your son's Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Shadow Heights, help me sing this song of worship. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Oh, humble thyself in 
the side of the Lord, and He will lift you up, and He will lift you up. Come and humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. In the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up, and He will lift you up. So, just tumble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Come on, Lord, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up, and He will lift you Somebody say this amazing grace this morning. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm It's good to be in the house of the Lord uh, for this morning's scripture reading. I'd like to invite your attention to the book of Mark. The chapter is two, and I'll read into your hearing verses one through verses 12. Once again, Mark chapter two, verses one through 12. And it reads as follows. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let him down on the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man uh, speak blasphemous? For we can forgive sins, but only by God. And immediately, when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, 
He said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether it is to say to the sick of palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed, and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up his bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw this in this fashion. May the Lord bless the reading, hearing, and the obedience to his holy and divine word. And at this time, we're going to petition the throne of God in prayer. Father God, it is once again we pause to say thank you and we appreciate you. You have so richly blessed us from the earliest of our beginnings down into this present moment. We are humbled to be in your presence this morning for no other reason than to worship you in spirit and in truth. We are asking a spe special prayer and petition for those that are sick, those that are infirm, those that are going through a season of bereavement, or those that just need a special prayer. We petition you and we asking your blessings upon our ministering servant, Brother John Thomas, who will shortly stand before us to boldly proclaim those things he has studied. We are motivated by your word and we are asking that those that don't know you, those that have not been baptized will ask, what must I do to be saved? When the storms of life are upon us, help us to keep the faith and trust you and leave all things up to you because we have not seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. When the storms of life uh, hit Haiti, when the Hurricane Ida and all the things that beset us are in our way, help us to keep the faith because we have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. No matter what happens to us in life, we are going to be still and know that you are God because you have promised us we have not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. And that will be enough. We honor you, we love you, and we praise you. God bless all my father's children. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, we're going to sing He's My King today. If we all have it, let us sing. All day long in Jesus I am singing. He's my song of joy will ever be. All the while he keeps my heart bells ringing. For his love is everything to me. Cause he's my king and oh I give love him. praise I sing. He's my blessed Savior, he's my King, my blessed King. Strings of love around my soul are flowing. From his love, love's everlasting spring. That is why my faith in him I'm showing. That is why Cause he's my king, and oh, I dearly love him. Yes, he's my king, no other is above him. All day long, in rapture and praise I sing. He's my blessed Savior, he's my king, my blessed king. Oh, cause he's my king. And oh, I dearly love him. Yes, he's my king. No other is above him. All day long, in rapture, praise I sing. He's my blessed Savior. He's my, my blessing. Oh, cause he's my king. And oh, I dearly love him. King, no other is above him. All day long in rapture praise I sing. 
Praise God this morning. We thank God once again. He have allowed us the opportunity to come into his house, to be able to be lifted up by his spirit. We thank him for watching over as we slumbered and slept on last evening. We thank him for watching over us as we went through another work week. We are just so thankful to our father for everything that he does, will do, and continue to do for us. It's good to see everybody here this morning. It's good to be uh, virtual once again, and we look forward to this being a short period of us being virtual, but right now with the way the numbers are going up, we had to revert back to a virtual service where we appreciate all those that are tuning in and joining in to us today. And we just thank God because uh, I don't know about you, but it's, it's been a trying week. It's Every day you turn your news on and you hear something that uh, is disturbing. So we, we this morning just thank God for allowing us this privilege and this opportunity to come to the sanctuary to be able to lift him up. I'm going to do a verse of my song and then we're going to go into the text for this morning, which come from the book of Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. We appreciate those that have participated in this service this morning. Twas from Christ, there is something in my life that makes me feel like flying away to be at rest, to be at rest. Uh, ever since I found Christ.
Amen. Amen. Thank God that one day when this earthly house of this tabernacle has desire, we have a building that's not made with hand, but made with God. We are going to look at this morning and be entertained by the a lesson coming from the book of Mark, chapter 2. We appreciate the reading of the scripture of our brother Kathy. And we want to just take a snapshot of this to be encouraged this morning. The Bible says, and again he entered into Caponia. After some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. It's good to know that anytime Jesus show up, there are noise, there are uh, excitement. Jesus bring excitement. And if we was going to put a subject on this lesson this morning, we would like to use when Jesus is in the house. When Jesus is in the house, things are different. Things are exciting. There are noise and there are uh, uh, just so much excitement going on to, to know that Jesus is in the house. We understand as we look at this chapter that in Mark, we learned that in Mark chapter 1, Jesus began his very public ministry in the city of Caponia. He entered the town and immediately began to preach about the kingdom of God. In this chapter, in that chapter, in chapter 1, we find that Jesus demonstrated his greatest power. He cast out demons and healed diseases of every sort. Uh, from Mark chapter 1 to verse 32, we learn that Jesus must have healed nearly every sick person that he came in contact with. In those days, as we look at chapter 2 of Mark, we find now that Jesus' preaching tour is over. Jesus and his men returned back to Caponia. This town was an important place uh, in life and his ministry for the Lord. Caponia serves as the northern headquarters for the ministry. Uh-huh. And we find that he's back home now. And he's in the house, as verse 1 says. And verse 2 says, straightway many were gathered together. Look, look at what happened. Jesus is in the house. He comes home. Excitement rise. People come from all over. People come from everywhere. And the Bible says that they gathered from everywhere just to hear and to see what this great man of God come to do and say today. I come to tell you today that when Jesus is in the house, we need to come with excitement. We need to come with some thrill. We need to come being lifted up. We need to come being elevated because Jesus is in the house and we know that when he's in the house, there's going to be some preaching. There's going to be some power exemplified. There's going to be some proof of who he is. I stopped by this morning to tell you, thank God for Jesus being in the house. As we go on a little bit further and see what's going on in the rest of this chapter, we find that there was a man that had an ailment. He was unable to walk, but being unable to walk mean that he couldn't do too much for himself. But I stopped by to tell you this morning, uh, thank God for people with compassion. Uh, if you're ever going to help somebody, you got to have some compassion. I don't know about you, but it's good to show a little compassion towards your brother or your sister. Here in this chapter, Jesus is in the house, uh, and all of a sudden folks have gathered from all all over and now they come just to see and hear what Jesus is going to do and now there was a man that had a problem with palsy well let's pause for station identification this man had palsy he couldn't walk couldn't do for itself but yet there was four individuals 
not one, not two, but four individuals that when they saw and heard that Jesus was in town, they came and wanted to get their friend to Jesus. And as they got to the house, uh, they saw that it was a crowd of people, people all around. It's good to know that one day we hope the church uh, would have a crowd of people around uh, where we can't even get into the door. I don't know if we'll do as they did back then, uh, but they climbed up on the rooftop. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be that lucky to do all of that, but at least we'll understand the urgency of trying to get their friend to Jesus because he couldn't help himself the love they had for trying to get their friend and guess what when they got to the house when they got to the house saw the crowd couldn't go through the front it was blocked it was news reporters and people all around then we find that they looked at another way to get to Jesus. The Bible said they went up the stairwell to the top of the house. And when they got to the top of the house, they began to do something unusual. They began to feel to reconstruct the roof on the house. Yeah, see, sometimes we have to go out the way where we can reconstruct something just to get to Jesus. Sometimes we have to reconstruct our life just to get to Jesus. Sometimes we have to change our preference that day just to get to Jesus because when we're trying to get to Jesus, it's not an easy job when you got the devil constantly throwing dots at you and trying to to you and trying to stop you from getting to Jesus. So the men saw the crowd and that they went up on the rooftop. They began to disconstruct the roof and tear it apart and the Bible said they tore open a big hole in the roof. Tore open the hole in the roof. Began to let the man with palsy down. Now notice, we're saying the man with palsy. Childs, very interesting point here, that Jesus is in the house. We already know that Jesus is in there preaching God's word. We also know that there are folks that came from all over and everywhere. And they, they there, some was there to hear what he had to say. Some was there to see what he was going to do. Some was there to just criticize. See, sometimes we got to be careful that sometimes we come to church or we come into the house uh, with the wrong attitude. But I stop by to tell you, when you come to hear Jesus, you're going to be elevated, uplifted, and encouraged just because you want to hear what Jesus has to say. You know, the miracles are great. But the word of God is more powerful than all the miracles is because of who he is. He demonstrates who he is through preaching God's word and letting us know about the kingdom of God. That if we're going to be a servant in his kingdom, we have to understand and know the word of God. So as Jesus was preaching, they tore open the roof. They let the man down in the midst of Jesus preaching. I can just vision that as Jesus was preaching God's word, Lord, I can see dust and dirt falling down in the midst of the service. I can see Jesus glancing up and seeing what's going on at this time. I can see some of the people that are around him trying to figure out what's happening, wondering is the word that powerful that the roof have came aloof. But no, it was the men that had compassion letting their brother down into the midst where Jesus is. I don't know about you, 
But thank God that sometimes when people care enough, they can get you to where you need to be to get some help. If all of us took that as a, a, a took that in our mind to get people to Jesus, just think what the world would be like this morning. We know we're living in some perilous times, but if we can have folks and saints trying to get folks to Jesus so that they can be able to hear the word of Jesus, so they can be elevated, for they can be lifted up, for they can be encouraged, for they'll know that Jesus is all powerful. He have let him down now. The man is in the midst of Jesus. The Bible says in about verse number five that when Jesus saw their faith, <laughs> he said unto the man that was sick with palsy, he said unto him, son, Thy sin be forgiven. Look at that. Look at that. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That means all of us need to get to the house where Jesus is. All of us need to get there where our sin can be forgiven by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, 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 and see, one thing about this, this lesson here, it shows the power of Jesus. And it shows the healing of Jesus, but it also shows the forgiveness of Jesus. And if there ever was a time that folks need to be forgiven, the time is now. Folks need to get to the house where Jesus is because, look, we've been going through a pandemic. We have had all this stuff going on around us. It's time that we come where Jesus is and allow him to preach the word that our sins can be forgiven. So Jesus said, son, thy sins be forgiven. And you know, I said people came from everywhere. Do you know Lamar, there was some critics sitting in the audience. The Bible says there was some scribes sitting there. Some folks with indignation thinking out into themselves. Who do this man think he is? Yeah, yeah, you know, sometimes people come and they got, they got, their mind is not where it should be. But their mind is running and they want to know, who is this man? that says, thy sin be forgiven. Don't he know nobody can uh, heal sin but God? That shows you how uneducated. That shows you how much they didn't know about the man that was in the house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, it's good to know and do your research yes, in knowing who Jesus is. Right. Jesus said, I am the Alpha right. and the Omega. Right. I am the beginning and the end. I was the one that went to the graveyard, called out Lazarus. Lazarus came forth. Oh, I am the resurrection. I got up early on a Sunday morning. I was in the grave, but I got up. The old grave couldn't stop me. And now I'm in the house. And in this house, Folks might talk about me. Folks might say some things about me. But in this house, uh, I'm going to show you the power that I have within me. That all I have to do is speak the words and it will be done. I come this morning to tell you that if you're not in the house, you need to get to the house where Jesus is. Because in the house where Jesus is, there is some healing. There is some Preaching, there is some forgiveness in the house where Jesus is. And I'm so glad that I'm a born again saint in the house of Christ. I'm glad that a long time ago I found out how to get to the house. Somebody led me to the house. And when I got to the house, I was able to go down in the watery grave of baptism, got up 
a new creature in Christ Jesus. I was in the house when I heard the preaching and I believe what I heard that I began to repent and make a transition in my life because I was in the house where forgiveness was. And then I confessed that yes, Jesus is the son of the living God. And after that, I went down in the watery grave of baptism, came up a new creature in Christ Jesus. Now look at here, look at here. I'm, 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 I'm close, I'm close, I'm closing. I, I didn't say it enough this morning. I'm close. Jesus said, son, thy sin had been forgiven. Critics couldn't understand what he was saying. They said, why reason ye these things in your heart is what Jesus asked him. And then he went on to say, whether I said to the man, thy sins be forgiven, or I said, arise, take up your bed, and walk. But look at here. I don't want to miss this. I don't want you to miss this. I don't want you to miss this. I want you to understand that right in there when it said the man had palsy. But by the time he got to Jesus, the man had changed to son. Son is a closer relationship to Christ than just a man. When we come to Christ, we might come as a person or just a name, but when we connect with Jesus, when we allow Jesus to come in our life, we become part of the family of Jesus. And Jesus said, son, thy sin be forgiven. This morning, don't you want to be part of Jesus' family? Don't you want to come in? to the house where Jesus is. We know there was preaching. We know that a need was met. We know that forgiveness was given. And you know what else? There was an award rendered. Because after he met the man need, he told the man to take his bed and to go. And folks was astonished. And the man was probably shouting all the way home. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. There's an award in coming to the house yes, yes. where Jesus is. This morning I plead with the audience. I plead with the virtual audience yes. to come to the house where Jesus is. And when you come to the house where Jesus is, you'll hear preaching. Yes. A need will be met. Yes. Your sins will be forgiven. Yes. And you will be able to be awarded. Because in that house, there is nobody like Jesus. His aims are right. His heart is kind. His grace is sufficient. His rest is satisfying. His promises are sure. His peace is perfect. His mercy is great. His salvation well, is free. Well, His blessings well, are many. Yes, sir. His touch well, is refreshing. Yes. His joy well, is unspeakable. Yes, sir. His wisdom well, is unequal. Yes, sir. His spirit well, is quickened. Yes, sir. His miracles well, are matchless. Yes, sir. And heaven is glorious yeah, yeah. when Jesus is in the house.
come today while the blood is running warm in your body. Come while you are able to be able to come to the house where Jesus is. We ask you at this moment to think about where you are in your life. If you need Jesus, we'll pray for you this morning. We won't only pray for you, but we'll try to teach you the way to Christ. We'll lift you up this morning. We'll encourage you this morning to come into the house where Jesus is. Because when you come into the house where Jesus is, Listen now, listen. Lives have been altered. Blinded eyes have been opened. Deaf ears have unstopped. Nights have turned to days. Hope has replaced defeat. Deaf men, dead men have come to life. Lost men have been found. Devils have trembled. Sinners have been broken. Saints have shouted. And angels have bowed. When you come to the house where Jesus is. Don't you know I've sinned against you, Lord? I admit that I'm wrong. Just like the prodigal son, and I want my way back home. I'm down on my bending knees, begging you to save this soul of mine. So please forgive me, Jesus. Jesus has tried me one more time. Good morning, church. We have now come to the part of service where we thank God for the ultimate sacrifice, which is sending his only son to die on the cross for our sins. I come from Matthew chapter 26, verse 26, where the Bible says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them. And he said, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. It is important during this occasion that we thank God for allowing us to remember Jesus' death. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for allowing us to remember Jesus' death, which was your, your ultimate sacrifice and also his. We pray that for the people who are taking communion on this day, that they take the bread, which, is, which was his broken body, and the blood, which was shed for our sins, with a clean hands and a pure heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may now take the bread and the cup. Now we have come down to this part of the service, which our Lord has given us the opportunity to be able to give back to him, showing our love and our appreciation for the things he has done in our life. Let us remember this, whosoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whosoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful, cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 through 7. Let us go to the Father in prayer. Kind, gracious, heavenly Father, 
We once again thank you, Lord, for all the many blessings you have given us, how you've been taking care of us from the beginning of time to this present time. Father, we just ask you to bless the giving that we have collected to be able to give back to you with love and not feeling like we're obligated to give because we are grateful, Father, for the things you have given us. We can never compare to your giving, but please accept this offering and we pray that it would be pleasing and acceptable in that sight. These and all other blessings we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>